The world is full of delicious destinations, but some places are real culinary capitals, where food takes a central role in daily life, where the culture of the place is expressed on your plate. That's what brings me here, to the Basque country in the north of Spain. Welcome to the foodie formula. This is Gourmet Getaways. We made it. We are here in San Sebastián and already everything is looking super beautiful. I don't know, something about it feels different and I think it has something to do with the excitement for all of these incredible pinchos. I've done a lot of research on San Sebastián and in this video I'm going to try to bring you really the best of the best as much as I can and try to uh, keep it authentic, give you a real traditional Basque Pinchos experience. So uh, let's see what I'm able to do for you. But uh, everywhere you look, it seems like there's incredible restaurants and I just want to try like everything that I can. We found a place to go. We're at Juancho Taberna, where they specialize in tortilla de patata, sandwiches of tortilla de patata to be exact. So uh, this whole city is packed with tortilla de patata and we're going to be trying a whole bunch of them. But this seems like a great place to begin. Let's give it a try. Oh, it's so good. It's much softer than a lot of tortilla de patatas that I've had before. Very smooth texture, very soft, perfect to fill a sandwich as they've done here. It's very rich and very creamy. Like the potatoes don't have any bite to them at all. They just sort of melt away. I would highly recommend this to anyone who wants to have a nice uh, filling lunch. This is only four euros, 15 cents, and and it, like this is enough to keep you going for most of a day, so I'm definitely gonna have to share. We just finished up at Juancho Taberna, and now we are on our way up that hill and we're going to be finding a, <clears throat> like a lookout bar which offers incredible views of the bay as well as uh, wine, vermouth, some small snacks, things like that. And um, it's already delicious, like we were already saying, like this is just the first place and, and already it's just amazing. So <clears throat> if this is only the first few hours, then it's hard to imagine what the rest of the week is going to look like. I think everybody is super excited and that's giving us energy to trek up this hill. At Juancho Taberna, <clears throat> we were talking mainly about the tortilla de patata uh, in the sandwich, which is kind of what they're fam most famous for, but actually everything was really delicious. The meatballs with potatoes had a nice tom fried tomato sauce that was just pretty, pretty incredible if I had to say so myself. And then we also got the mushrooms, which were in a s kind of strange sauce. It had some ingredient that felt familiar, but we couldn't quite put our fingers on it. But it was tasty. I'm sure there was some tomato in there, a little bit of acidity, so plenty of umami from the mushrooms. Very recommendable, I would say. Now we're heading up the hill. It's gonna be a bit of a trek. We're only just getting started, heading that way, about 15 minutes to go, but I think it's going to be worth it.
finally made it up to the top to Urguyeco Polborinha, which as you can see is very high up the mountain overlooking the bay. And this place is incredible. Right down there you've got a bar where you can order beer, wine, cocktails. Uh, one interesting one that we tried was called the Uskaz Spritz, which is basically an Aperol Spritz with Chacoli instead of Prosecco, and that was really nice. Um, I might even say better than a, than a lot of Aperol Spritz that I've had, so that one would be worth a try for sure. And now, since today is my sister-in-law's birthday, we're going to head back down into the city to seek out some Basque cheesecake. Yeah, we're going to have to leave these incredible views behind for a little bit, just, uh, just so that we can check out uh, some more of the old town, because we haven't really gotten to get a full feel for it quite yet. Um, but so far, I can say this has been an incredible experience. Already, the vibes of San Sebastián are incredible. We really enjoyed the feel. The architecture is beautiful. The food that we've had so far has been de absolutely delicious, and I think it's only going to get better from here. So uh, let's see what's still to come. We're here at Bar Sport, and this is a really chaotic environment. There's so many people here, a lot of tourists, a lot of locals, but uh, it looks like it's really going to be worth it. I've got two pinchas that I'm trying. One is from the Pinchas app, which I'll explain about a little bit more later. That's the foie gras de las landas. And then uh, sea urchin, crema de, er de erizo. So there's like sea urchin kind of uh, stock in the actual sea urchin. So I'm gonna go for this one first also to drink. I've got a uh, vermouth, vermouth, uh, isagirre. So I'm gonna give this a try right now. This one is different from any other that I've tried. It almost reminds me of a glue vine from Germany. There's like notes of cinnamon, notes of, van notes of uh, vanilla. Really nice. I'm gonna see how it uh, combines with the uh, sea urchin. I've never tried a sea urchin before in my life. I have no idea what to expect, but here we go. Looks like it's got some, I mean, it's a, a cream kind of a bisque almost, and it's got some uh, what look to be salmon eggs on the top. Let's, let's give it a try. It's sort of like a lobster bisque, but it's it's super intense. It's not like anything I would have expected. It's salty, it's creamy, it's rich. There's a bit of uh, like tomato in there. That is really, really nice. I'm impressed. I'm gonna come back to that, but I've got to try. This is the star of the show. Foie de las Landas. I don't know what that means, but I mean, I know it's foie gras, but de las Landas. I think it's made on the grill, so it's warm. And uh, I'm going to give it a try right now. It's so rich. It's like if you, if you took like a um, like a fatty part of a ribeye times 10 multiplied and put it on a slice of bread that would be this this is incredible it's just like an explosion of richness it's so so fatty so intense and soft and just really nice I can really see why this made the Pinchos app, seriously. I think, uh, I think I may have a new, like, th this just entered my, my favorite foods, like this is really, really delicious.
I might have to go back for another one or a few. We just got out of Bar Sport, which you can see down there is a very popular place. It's packed with locals, it's packed with tourists, it's chaotic. You've got to really like work your way up to the bar to get anyone's attention, but it was so good. The food was amazing, the service was amazing. They ask you your name, and when your food comes out, they call you by your name, they look you in the eye. It was so friendly, even among a lot of tourists who maybe didn't speak English. They managed to keep it authentic, and I thought that was so cool. Um, Bar Sport, like, surpassed my expectations. So far, San Sebastián is surpassing my expectations. I don't even know what to think about spending the next whole week here. Uh, but if it keeps up at this pace, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what develops from here. We're here in Gois Argi. Gois Argi. You hear, you hear that sound? That's best people coming for me in the comments about my pronunciation. But here we are with the marihuli. This is a bread with green pepper, salmon, and anchovy on top. I'm so excited about this. This is from the Pinchos app as well. I'm gonna give this a try right now because I think this looks incredible. I'm gonna go all in. It's warm, it's cold, it's salty, it's got like, it's super savory. This was, this is, I see why it's in the Pinchos app. Some chefs are, they know what they like and this was delicious. So we've got these shrimp skewers with like a tomato. I don't know what else is in here. There's definitely tomato, but shrimp skewers on bread. I'm gonna go for one of these. I'm gonna take the skewer out so I don't uh, end up in any danger. The flavor is so intense here. Garlic, tomato, shrimp. The bread is crusty. The middle is soft. It's just an explosion of, of seafood flavor, but complemented with tomato and garlic. It's really nice. It's Sunday night. A lot of the bars are closed. Some of them are open. I think we're starting off, we're gonna break the rule of only having one or two pinchos in each place. We've got bread, green pepper, mushrooms. There's like half a, like a slice of boiled egg and camon iberico. Can you do any better than that? I already knew it was going to be good before I had had it. Got an incredible richness from the jamón. The pepper did the same thing as in the marihuli. A kind of vegetable feeling, but then there's richness from the mushrooms. There's an egg hanging out in there just for like additional egginess. Like, what else could you want? Cheers. San Sebastian has already surpassed expectations. We've been to a handful of bars already and it just feels like everybody is trying to make you feel at home. In Europe, they're not known for being especially hospitable in restaurants compared to places like the US. Everywhere is a little bit less patience for foreigners. And I didn't feel any of that today in San Sebastian. 
Now, mind you, I speak Spanish, and I think that that helps a lot compared to just speaking English, but it was just a whole different experience. I felt welcomed, and more than anything, I felt like the food was incredible. Every single pincho was like a different take on food that I knew. I've had salmon, I've had anchovies, I've never had foie gras, which shout out to Bar Sport on the Pinchos app. They've got a pincho, uh, which is foie gras on the grill. And that is incredible. I'm just kind of in awe right now. On top of everything, the surroundings are beautiful. The streets are well kept. The buildings, the architecture is beautiful. The beach is beautiful. The mountains around the beach are beautiful. I might not leave. I might not leave San Sebastián. That's how much I like it here. It's been quite the experience and we've only been here for one day. On a Sunday night when most of the stuff, most of the main places are closed. So my expectations for the week to come are incredibly high. I can't imagine how it could get any better than this. And yet I have a feeling that it's going to be so. We're gonna, we're gonna bring you the best pinchos, the best places. Here we've got some opportunities to do some experiences that are not quite typical. I'm gonna try to find a cider house. I'm gonna try to find uh, La Viña. The original Basque cheesecake was closed today, but they're gonna be back. Same with Barnestor, which is apparently the best tortilla de patata in all of Spain the best uh, Spanish omelet. We're arriving to the beach, so now I'll just regale you with some nighttime beach footage. day two in San Sebastian and what a treat it's been already. The food that we had yesterday was so good and everything is relatively reasonably priced um, and just really well made. It blows my mind that nothing that we ate was exceptionally complicated it wasn't as though we were having any sort of uh, Michelin star stuff. Um, of course, uh, I'd like to do that in the future. If you'd like to see that, hit me with a like and maybe a subscribe. Support the channel and then we'll get there one day. Um, I'm on my way down to a grocery store to get some breakfast. This Throughout this week, we're going to be doing I think breakfast and most lunches in our Airbnb. Um, my wife is working during this week and so uh, I'm gonna be using the days to edit videos and start producing more uh, content, try to even do some cooking in the Airbnb, uh, cooking videos of course. And so that's the the plan for this week and then in the evenings once we're all free then it's time to hit the town and uh, try some of this exhausting list of uh, pinchos that I've carved out for for us during this week. Another day, another pincho. We're here in Bar Boga, where we're going to try their flagship uh, pincho, which is platillo. It's basically fried potatoes with garlic and some parsley, as well as a bit of paprika on top. 
uh, paired with a nice fast cider. It's going to be the first time trying the cider, so let's see how this goes. But first, platillo. Mm. It's very, um, very lightly fried though. Inside is like mashed potato with a like very thin crust of um, kind of fried potato. So we had a little technical issue there. Ran out of uh, ran out of iPhone storage. Classic mistake. But I was just saying that um, the texture of the potatoes is really nice. The one thing that I didn't get to mention in the first round, which actually makes it good that it did cut off, is that the paprika doesn't look like much, but it will hit you afterwards. It's, it gives it a really nice spice that uh, that I really appreciate. Otherwise, it might come across as a little bit plain. The cider, I think, uh, got cut off, but it was very tart, a little bit... Uh, more watery than I expected. It doesn't taste very strong of alcohol. It's just um, a slight tartness, kind of refreshing. I think this would hit really well on a summer's day. It's not my top choice, but it's not bad either. Okay, so we're back on the Pinchos Prawl after uh, stop at Barcia Voga. The platillo was really nice. I think it was just the right uh, way to kind of whet the appetite, get things started, kind of open things up. But now I'm ready to go in for like for the real deal. And so we're heading over to Bar Antonio or Antonio Bar. I need to check on the order. I think both would be you, you would get the point either way. But there they are particularly specialized in tortilla de patata. It's one of the contenders that claims to boast one of the best tortillas in all of San Sebastian. So we're gonna see if that's the case uh, here in just a few short minutes. We're here in Bar An Antonio Bar and already the service is really nice. Um, very friendly people, they gave us some beers while we waited for, for a spot. Um, it's important that you have some patience when you get here because uh, the place is popping all the time and uh, yeah, don't expect to get a table right away. Come with patience, be relaxed and, uh, and you will have your reward. They gave us a bunch of really nice recommendations, some stuff that we already researched and others that we had no idea and so I'm super excited to see uh, how everything tastes. First one, anchoa. Looks like, uh, well, an anchovy with some uh, with green pepper going in. Let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. mm. That might be one of the best anchovies I've ever had. Very salty, very rich. And then the combination with the, with the green pepper is incredible. Let's see what comes next. So we, we took the whole recommendation and we got a little bit of everything. Um, it all looks incredible. Like, I'm really excited for this. I'm going to get started with this, uh, I believe this is the Igueldo, which has, um, if I understood it right, tuna, tomato, peppers, and anchovies. So it's got olive oil and balsamic vinegar as well. Really nice, just like a barrage of flavors, sweet, salty, acid, oily, a little spice from the peppers, so nice. Okay, next up is the shrimp ravioli in martini sauce. Look at this, it's beautiful. I can't quite grab it, but it's, it looks incredible. And I wasn't expecting the sauce to be white, but I'm excited. <laughs> oh, this is so good. The sauce is so creamy. I was not expecting this at all. I don't know how they make this, but this is fantastic. Really nice shrimp flavor is there. 
the ravioli, but the sauce is the winner, if you ask me. Next up is the arsa, which is like a deconstructed tortilla de patata. You've got like a whole egg. It was beautiful and jiggly, but I accidentally already smashed it when I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So I'm just going to go in now. Fried potatoes, onions, peppers, parsley, egg. Really, really brilliant. Mm. That was so, so nice. Moving along, I'm kind of just running, running down the line. Next up is the solomillo, which is like a sirloin steak. It's like a little sirloin done beautifully, medium with a sauce, something yellow in there. The yellow is mustard. And it's got some salt on top, with like a, but it's also it's a brown sauce with just a few bits of mustard. And it's really nice, very tender, perfectly cooked as far as I'm concerned. It comes with a little salad on the side. Really nice. That's the way that I want a steak to be cooked. Just so tender. Can't go wrong. And last but not least, I'm going in for this crujiente de rabo de buey, which is an oxtail, um, like ravioli. It looks like it's been stewed for hours at a low temperature and it's got still a little bit of reddish color which indicates perfect uh, perfect cooking temperature you can really see the thinning of my hair up here but anyway here goes disappears in your mouth. That for me is a perfectly, perfectly raised oxtail. This was fabulous. If you are ever in San Sebastián, don't leave without going to Antonio Bar. The time has come. We got another Basque cheesecake. This one, the presentation is incredible. It's got like a drizzle of, some, of strawberry, raspberry. It's got some little chunks of uh, something or another. They're already trying it and they're freaking out. There's, there's cr like little crumbs of something. There's ice cream. Like this is, this is a presentation. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything in there so that I get all of the flavors, but here we go. Ice cream, cheesecake, some kind of fruity thingies, strawberry or raspberry sauce, like what else can you ask for in life? It beats, it beats the one, the last one. This is the second one we've had and it beats it by a long shot. Mm. It's so rich, very sweet. I'm gonna try the cheesecake just by itself. So smooth, so delicious. I, I almost like it better with, with just the cheesecake, not so much of the ice cream. Because the ice cream is quite sweet. It's, uh, but it's just, it's fantastic. This might turn into a fight at the end. The caramelization on the top is what does it for me. I guess we're going to have to come back here. We missed, uh, so apparently the tortilla de patata ends 
before 7 p.m. So we're gonna have to come back here anyway. So it's gonna be another cheesecake, I can tell you right now. We're back here at our Airbnb. I think that the Basque cider that we had at Siaboga, um, maybe we didn't give it a fair shot. Maybe it wasn't uh, the best representation of what a Basque cider is. However, I did happen to come across this Basque cider from San Sebastian, well, in the, in the outskirts, um, that apparently you open with a corkscrew, if, if that's not the right way to do it. I know they'll come for me in the comments. Sorry, Basque people. I'm trying to do you right. I just wanted to reflect a bit on the experience at Bar Antonio or Antonio Bar as it's written on the building. Um, that was such a cool experience. It's, it's easy to have good food, but when you have service, like the service at Bar Antonio, it's, it's on a whole nother level. The, the feeling that we got from being there was just incredible. The, the people were so nice. Our waiter, shout out to Manuel, was fantastic. The guy gave us great recommendations, all of which were on my list, some of which were not. And it was just uh, exactly what you would hope for in a traditional experience. There was local people there. There was, I'm going to try this from a bit of a height. It was uh, such a cool experience. And unfortunately, they didn't have the tortilla de patata that we were aiming for. And so we're going to have to come back for that another day. But <laughs> fair disclaimer, I spilled a decent amount of cider on the floor. Uh, but we're going to have to go back because... Uh, it was one of those places that just makes you want to come back. You want to try more. You want to have that experience, have fun, make crack jokes, drink beers. Couldn't ask for a better restaurant experience. Pincho hopping in Basque country. Antonio Bar, make sure you put it on your list if you're coming to San Sebastian. Clean up on aisle four. We are here in Sucaldean Aitor Santa Maria, which is a really trippy kind of place. Uh, if you're in the mood for a religious experience, uh, then it would seem that this is the tortilla de patata for you. Um, here they've, their specialty is a tortilla that is made right in the moment when you order it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to giving this a try because um, the atmosphere is incredible. Um, it, I can only imagine that this was once a church or a convent or something of the like. We've got stained glass windows, um, saints looking down at us. Uh, we'll have to ask for forgiveness later on but uh, for now we're enjoying a nice uh, caña the moment has come the tortilla is here it looks really nice um, almost like uh, you would expect a pretty normal omelette to look and I'm gonna be jumping right in and giving it a try it looks like it's a little bit runny on the inside, slightly brown on the outside. Here goes the 
this fight. Wow. It's like deliciously runny inside. Once you start cutting into it, it doesn't have very much uh, structure. But the taste is, is fantastic. It's so creamy. Really like you would expect from an omelet. Like a French omelet. You've got little, little chunks, thin, thin slices of uh, potato in there. So it really gives you the impression that you're eating a, a, a French omelet with potato in it. I don't think it has any onion. I think it's a real classic potato only. And it's just a great way to start, I would say. If this is the, the beginning, then I'm, I don't even know what to expect for the middle and the end. <clears throat> One other little surprise here with this tortilla de patata, made fresh in the moment, is um, the bread. It's actually really fluffy, kind of whole, looks like whole grain, and it's just a, got a very wholesome flavor that I think complements this perfectly, and I would definitely recommend not to ignore the basket of bread on the side because it's really good. So also worth noting is that this uh, this bar has another dish which is, shows up in the Pinchos app, which is again um, curated by the Michelin star chefs of the, of the city, and um, that's the patatas casi bravas. We're not going to try those right now because we've got a lot of to tortillas to burn our way through, but um, I think we'll definitely have to come back to give that one a try if we have the time. Another hour, another tortilla de patata. We're here in Bodega Donostiarra, which is uh, apparently a very highly recommended uh, tortilla de patata. And uh, it's made right in the moment, so you've got, an, but it, this one, it doesn't look the same as the last one, guys. It's not an omelet. This is a dis distinctively a tortilla. It's got nice brown edges, and I'm excited to give it a try. The inside is pretty creamy, just like the last place, but I don't know, I got a feeling that this one's going to be a bit different, so let's give it a try. Somehow the, the egg flavor is more prominent. It's, it's not as delicate a flavor as the, as the last place with the omelet. Mm. I'm pretty sure that this one has some some onion or garlic to it, but it's very runny in the center and it just gives it a... Whereas the last place felt like it had creaminess to it. This one is more of a, like a richness, like a, like a boldness. I noticed the potatoes are sliced very thin and I think that that's one of the things that makes it a bit unique. It's got that, uh, what I assume is a bit of a characteristic here of the tortillas in the Basque country. It's the runny middle. It's just heavenly. So we also got the chorizo version, and I'm going to try that right now. As a bit of a carnivore, I can say that I absolutely love that. It's got a really nice... Um, like a lot of chorizo in every bite and uh, the same texture, everything, but with an added kick of saltiness that only chorizo can give. I'm a big fan of this. And it's the thin cut potatoes, that's what strikes me always before in Madrid, in Valencia. I would always see pretty big wedges of potato, but these are quite thin. I think that's part of what allows them to keep such a runny texture in the middle because the potatoes are already like thin 
fully cooked, ready to go. They're also in very small pieces, so they're not adding a bunch of um, structure to the tortilla. It's really the egg that gives it the structure, as opposed to the other way around, which I like. I'm gonna have to try making making ones like this. It's it's something else. Four p.m. means time for another pincho of tortilla de patata. This time we are getting it with anchovy because that's the specialty here at Bar Vergara. We're switching it up to some chacolí and uh, looking forward to giving it a try. Since we made it all the way out here, we're also going to try one of their specialty tapas called la chalupa, or not tapas, I should say, say pinchos. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it is. The moment has come and we've got our tortilla de anchoas. Just came out, looking fresh. Again, very runny on the inside, like significantly, I would say even more than some of the others. You can't quite see it from this piece, but it's like, as soon as I cut into it, it's spilled out. Oh, my mouth is watering. You can smell the anchovies for sure, but it's, it gives it such a rich umami smell. I can't wait to try this. Whoa, it's so salty, like, not in a bad way, like, the anchovies just give it a whole deep, flavorful explosion where it's like, the umami is amplified by the saltiness and it's just, it's really, really good. I'm trying to soak up some of this with some bread. Mm. It's intense. It's like the kind of saltiness that you get from a tortilla with chorizo, but amped up. It's just uh, like a real eye-opener. I like this a lot. It's a big flavor. That's what I'm out here for. If it isn't big flavor, I don't want it. So I should mention that this bar is out in um, the Gross neighborhood. It's outside of the old city. It's in a more legit neighborhood where you're gonna find more local places. It's not a huge trek to get here, but you've gotta walk a little bit compared to the city center, the, old, the historic center, El Casco Viejo. But 100% worth it. I would have come here just for this tortilla. Luckily, we've got other stops along the way as well, but you've got to try this. Next up is the chalupa, which is one of the other specialties from here that made it onto the Pinchos app. It's, I don't know how to describe this, it's like, there's like a toasty cheese layer underneath, and then it's sort of like a croquette, but at the same time, not. There's mushrooms, there's shrimp, there's cheese. This is what it looks like. I think that this is cheese underneath. And it just looks sort of like a croquette inside, but I have a feeling it's gonna be so much more than that. San Sebastian just keeps getting better and better. The crust is something like, it reminds me of something, like some kind of hors d'oeuvres that I've tried like in my childhood at a random point in time there's a breadiness in there like there must be some kind of bread or like a dough involved in making that crust and the the taste is is really really good i didn't get that much shrimp in there but the mushrooms definitely uh, make an appearance and um, it's got the croquetti feel like the kind of floweriness that you get from a roux in a croquette um, it has some of that and it's nice if you're here for the tortilla, you might as well go all the way. Get a chalupa as well, it's worth it. So, 
guys, we are here at Bar Nestor, the home of the world's best tortilla de patata. And they're closed for vacation, of course. Now, I'm not deterred. As you can see up there, they're going to open back up in a couple of days. So we're going to have to dedicate ourselves to getting a piece of the coveted tortilla de patata known for being one of the best in the world. It's not going to be easy. We're only going to have a few days to do it, but I'm certain that with a little bit of determination and hopefully some good luck, we're going to be one of the chosen ones. So I'm going to try to be a little bit louder on this one because the music is playing pretty loud, but we're here in Atari Gastrolecu where we're going to try brocheta de langostino, which is a shrimp skewer on bread with a nice little tomato, probably tomato, garlic, maybe green pepper mixture. It looks really nice and um, yeah, let's give it a try. It's like <clears throat> something with vinegar in there that I wasn't expecting, hence the coughing. There's a little bit of vinegar, something or another going on there, and um, it gives an, an unexpected kick, but the shrimp is so delicious, like very rich, very um, shrimpy for lack of a better word, but you can tell it's like high quality ingredients in here. Um, it's nice. I don't know what else they put in there with the vinegar, but it's like, it gives it some sweetness too. I wish I knew how to cook shrimp like this because I would do it all the time. This is really good. Check it out. Atari Gastro de Cu, Brocheta de Langostinos. We're here at La Vina, <clears throat> the home of the legendary Basque cheesecake, the original. And um, well, we were on our tortilla de patatas kick today, so we went ahead and just ordered a tortilla de patatas as well. So we're going to give that a try. The potato really shines in this one. Potato and, and a bit of saltiness from the... They must have salted the potatoes because the potatoes are kind of giving the structure in this one as opposed to the egg, which is a bit of a difference from the rest of the ones that we've had today. I have to say I really like the increased presence of the, of the potato here. La Viña is specialized in cheesecakes, but their tortilla de patata is also really nice. The moment has come to try the famous cheesecake from La Viña. Here we go, still warm. It's melty, but it's got a texture. It's like there's a texture and then it just disappears. There's a moment of happiness with the texture and then it disappears. It's so soft, caramelized. I can see why it's the original. I can see why it's considered the best. Very good. Go to La Viña. You'll do it anyway, but go to La Viña. We made it. We're here at Casa Valles, where we're going to try the Hilda, the very first pincho created here in San Sebastián. I've got my napkin ready because I've heard that this can get messy. It's another one shot, and here I've got five peppers, one olive and one anchovy. It looks very nice, and I'm excited to give it a try. Here we go. The olive does have a pit, so be careful. Overall, this is really nice. There's quite, quite the contrast of the spiciness with the peppers. Spiciness of the peppers. And the salty, fishy taste of the anchovy. Briny olive, a little bit sour, kind of a nice way to wake up and get your pinchos experience started. 
I'm gonna, in, now in Bilbao. I said I was going to try it next time with a beer, and here we are. Here's the beer. I think that's a good choice. It kind of meets it in the same plane. You've got a little bit of bitterness in the beer, and that sort of complements. I feel like a um, typical San Sebastian kind of guy out here with my Hilda enjoying a nice weather and um, nice company. We had to order a tortilla de patata. We saw it sitting there in a little bocadillo, which is a sandwich, and we just had to give it a go. So here's a bonus. Let's give it a try. Mm. My favorite tortilla de patatas are the ones with onion as well, and this one ticks the box. It is a bit firmer, like the tortillas that I got to know living in Valencia and in Madrid. I would rate it pretty, pretty high up there. It's, it's nice to see the variety of the tortillas, some which are runnier inside, some which are more firm. This one is on the firmer end of the spectrum, but it still has a nice moisture in the middle to, to keep things nice and tasty. Guys, we're back at Antonio Bar for the second time because right now at 6.30 they've brought out the tortilla de patata. It looks amazing. I see people already eating it. Ours is going to be out soon, but I'm so excited because this is supposed to be one of the best tortillas in the whole city. And from what I've seen, it, it's really a labor of love and they, and they put a lot into it. So uh, I think this is going to be a real winner. I'm excited to share with you how it goes. The moment has come. The tortilla de patata from Antonio Bar. I am so excited about trying this. It's supposed to be one of the best. I'm already seeing the reactions. I'm seeing people eating it. It looks so um, like caramelized. If you look at the, it's so dark in color, and I think it's because everything is so nicely fried up, slowly in the nice oil, and I can't, I can't take the suspense anymore. I have to just try it. There's green chili in here, which is, I think, a really nice touch. I'm literally salivating. Here we go. Guys, it is so good. The onions are so caramelized. This, this one is like the, the record holder in my book. I've never had a tortilla de patatas better than this. The inside is like creamy. Like it's, it's, it's not runny, but it's creamy. And there's a lot of potato in here. It's got a structure, but it's like This is, this is next level. This is some next level shit right here. The onions are so caramelized and, and sweet, but also salty. The pepper gives it an incredible touch. Like, it's kind of like fajitas. It's like a fajitas tortilla de patata. That's what it reminds me of. That, that feeling of like, fried up peppers and onion and it's just so rich it's so it's sweet it's salty it's creamy it's rich the potatoes are exceptionally well fried too like these guys must have been like you can see how dark in color they are they're like you can tell that they got crispy and then re-softened by the egg. This has changed my understanding of tortillas. I'm never going to be able to be happy with my own again, I think. I'm going to have to try to recreate this because this is, this is magic. Absolute magic. 
do it. It's worth it. Come to Antonio Bar. The, the wait wasn't even, like, there wasn't even people here at 6.30 when the tortilla came out. If you come later on, there's tons of people. Nobody outside. Free tables. It's so worth your while. I could keep talking, but I'm going to cut it off here, and I'm just going to fully invest myself in enjoying the last bit of tortilla. I don't know if you can hear this, I'll try to talk down a little bit, but I'm here at Siri Miri, where I'm gonna try a tortilla baga, so like a, kind of like a lazy or homeless tortilla. It's like a runny egg with uh, some peppers and onions, confit onions, and potato chips, and chorizo all on top. It's quite the combination. I was expecting something a little different, like a tortilla kind of all uh, mixed together. But this one is uh, equally interesting and modern take. So let's give it a try. The peppers and onions give it a really nice uh, sweetness. The potato chips, funnily enough, do make it taste like a tortilla de patatas. And the chorizo is beautiful. It's very like runny because of the the onions and the peppers are in like a almost like a sauce but I think it's just the juices from the, the juices from the actual peppers themselves. Really nice. Pincho de anchoa con crema de centollo. Spider crab cream on top of an anchovy on bread, of course. I just finished up at Bar Chepecha and it was a bit loud in there. I didn't feel totally comfortable uh, just recording and talking out loud, so I kind of uh, continued on with my, uh, my uh, pincho de anchoa con crema de centollo. Just to give a quick idea, it was really tasty. The, the anchovy was a bit richer than a lot of the ones that I've had over the last few days. And then the spider crab cream was a bit unusual. Like there was an acidity there that I can only imagine comes from some kind of vinegar, maybe the one that the anchovy came in. But there was a distinct kind of tartness alongside the creaminess of the cream. It was pretty good. I can see why it made the pincho set. Another hour, another pincho. I'm here at uh, Gandarias, which has two pinchos on the pincho set. One is a shrimp skewer, and I've had a lot of shrimp skewers already on this um, trip, so I thought I'd switch it up and go with my real mainstay, which it's got to be meat. This is the solo millo, which is the sirloin steak. It's topped with some flaky salt and um, a couple pieces of pepper. So I'm going to give it a try right now. Mm. Pretty much rare on the inside. 
seared on the outside. So tender. Mm. As I understand it, the, the green peppers are a huge, typical accompaniment to steak here. So this is sort of like a little miniature steak dinner on a little piece of bread. Very nice. For this and the beer, I paid five euros and something. So great deal. I just got out of Gandarias, which was a really nice experience. The first night that we were here, we actually stopped by and left because it was so packed and so busy. It's a very touristy place because they've got two Pinchos on the Pinchos app and it's just well located. So you get a lot of people from all over the place. While I was waiting for my Solomillo, I had this whole conversation with a lady from Paris and her friend who wanted uh, me to take them a picture with the menu in the background. So it's, it's a very animated place. And uh, for some people, it's not the vibe. I really wanted to check it out because uh, there's a lot of hype around it. I've, I've seen it in a lot of my research. So I went ahead and tried it and I was glad that I did. The Solomillo was great and um, I would recommend stopping by. Don't be deterred by the crowds. As long as you're patient, you actually, uh, they have like a system with the little, these little cards which are uh, basically like reservation buzzers, like when your pincho is ready, then the buzzer goes off and you bring it to the bar, trade it in for your pincho. So in that sense, it's very efficient, even though there's not a lot of space and it's hard to figure out where you're going to actually sit down or stand in, in my case. Um, it's worth it. It's worth it. And the environment is very lively, so you'll definitely have a good time. Can recommend, give it a try. We might even go back there to try some chuleta, which has been waiting on our list all week. It's been an eventful 24 hours. After some trouble last night for, at one place trying to get served, they ran out of um, all of the things that I wanted to try. So we left and then we went to another place where we also had to wait and then I started filming and then I ran out of space in my phone and this morning we tried to go to the famous Bar Nestor and we came within about eight people of scoring a slice of heaven of the world's best tortilla de patata but alas it was not meant to be so we will have to try again later. We're here at Candarias, drowning our sorrows with a few more pinchos. And um, I liked the Solomillo so much last night that I thought I would come back to try the brocheta de gambas that I wasn't in the mood for last night, as well as a brocheta de chuleta to get an idea of how their chuleta is in case we want to go for a full-size chuleta later on. So, without further ado, I'm going to give the brocheta de chuleta a try. It is it's already <clears throat> looking really juicy, so I'm going to try to keep it over the plate, but here we go. Wow. It was super tender. The flaky salt on top just like gets it bursting with flavor. It's cooked very, very tender. Even comes with some fries. I'm gonna check those out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is a, a winner for sure. Make sure to give it a try. People who know me or those, even those who don't, they quickly find out that I love meat and like, look at that. It's rare, it's seared, the 
it's salty. I think that's all they put is just salt. And that is the key to my heart right there. <clears throat> I should say to the key to my culinary heart, only my wife has the key to my heart. Really nice. Next up is the brocheta de langostinos. I'll try to keep it all in one place there. It's got like a red and green pepper. This looks like there's some onion in there too. Like a bit of a, maybe a vine vinaigrette uh, salad or sauce. I won't, uh, oh yeah, there's definitely some vinegar in there. I've tried some similar brochetas over the last couple of days and they all seem to have this uh, vinegary, peppery mixture on top. So let's give it a try. It's, um, it's not as intensive a vinegar taste as some of the other ones that I've tried. The shrimp are very um, rich in flavor, like you can tell that these guys are fresh. It's like a shrimp that punches above its weight class, almost bordering on like the, like a richer meat like crab or lobster. <clears throat> the Pinchos app has been a lifesaver on this trip because it basically tells you what <clears throat> some of the best chefs in San Sebastián are thinking are their favorite Pinchos. So, you can't go wrong with, with trying some of these. Take the leap, give them a try. Try other ones that aren't on the Pinchos app. Also, all of the ones that we've tried that aren't on the Pinchos app have also been really delicious. So uh, don't limit yourself. Greetings from future me. You may or may not have surmised that something happened on our trip. It's the risk that all hardcore foodies take when they go out all out in any destination known for gastronomic greatness. Food poisoning. After much discomfort and even a visit to the Donostia University Hospital, shout out to all my docs and nurses who took great care of me while I was there. Uh, my pursuit of pinchos was painfully paused. No chuleta. No cider houses, no Carriera al Vino Tinto, which is a red wine braised uh, veal cheeks, and perhaps worst of all, no tortilla de patata from Bar Nestor. It was very unfortunate, but it left me with three takeaways that I wanted to share with you and hopefully help you in case you run into a bit of turbulence in your own travels, whether that's food poisoning or anything else. Uh, the first thing is that these things just sometimes happen. Was it an undercooked steak? Was it a dodgy anchovy that had been sitting perched on a bar counter for too many hours? Was it a runny tortilla de patata? I have no idea, but I also have no regrets. Food poisoning can happen when you travel. Food poisoning can happen in your house. Don't let that stop you from having a great time and trying what interests you. In more than five years of living in Europe, I've eaten everything and I've never gotten sick from food. This was the first time in Europe. Um, the next takeaway is don't try too hard to build to a crescendo at the end of your trip and saving the best for last. Travel is always unpredictable and so you can't trust that everything will go exactly according to plan. Stay flexible enjoy every moment along the way, every stage of the journey. And, um, you know, some of the best food that we ate in the whole trip was the stuff that I hadn't even hyped up in my mind that much. If you leave room for flexibility, the trip itself will take care of you. Finally, remember that you can't do everything, but you also don't have to. I can't think of a single trip where I did every single last thing from my itinerary. Um, if you did, there would hardly be any reason to go back. Even with all of the places that I visited in San Sebastián, I barely scratched the surface of its culinary scene. I took the recommendations from the Michelin star chefs, but I didn't visit any of their restaurants. I sampled a bit of chuleta, but I didn't have a whole one to myself. I consumed an 
incredible amount of tortilla de patata, but the most legendary one of all still managed to elude me. I knew when I went to San Sebastián that you should always use the best ingredients that you can get your hands on, and sometimes making just one single ingredient stand out with a simple yet profound preparation is better than any elaborate recipe that requires dozens of details and a bottomless bank account. And yet, this trip to San Sebastián still felt like a discovery. It reminded me that this is why we travel. The food speaks about the place. The terroir tells a story. And if you listen closely, you'll learn along the way and you'll take something incredibly special home with you. The longing to return. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it to here, I am eternally grateful. I've already received so much love from um, my brief time on YouTube and I'm really looking forward to bringing you future foodie videos, whether that's travel, whether that's cooking techniques, gear reviews, uh, it's all coming down the line and your subscribing would mean the world to me and it will help me uh, to make this even bigger and even better uh, and hopefully return very soon to San Sebastian. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.